Welcome to SI Voices webinar. And my name is Sharon Fisher, and I am president of Seroptimist International. And today I'm happy to share the platform with our New York team of Seroptimist Volunteer UN reps and our hardworking international director of advocacy. And of course, those who help behind the scenes, including other UN reps, the Global Impact Team, and Sue and Ayushi from my team. Our Road to Equality bus is on its way to the Commission on the Status of Women, or CSW as we call it, in New York City. No expensive hotels, no jet lag this year, and well, okay, no Broadway plays and no Times Square. But also, no limitation on how many delegates can join us. Other years, we have been limited in our attendance, but not this year. This is the first time the event is online, and so we will learn together. Each year, a priority theme is named as well as the review or a past theme. The priority theme this year is women's full and effective participation and decision-making in public life, wow. as well as the elimination of violence for achieving gender equality and the empowerment of all women and girls. Oh, the review theme is women's empowerment and the link to sustainable development goals. You will learn about these issues and understand how your local club and your region and union and federation work can be part of the global outcomes in achieving the sustainable development goals. Today, our New York team, your voices at the UN, are going to give you a tour of why there is a CSW and why seroptimists need to engage. Help us understand the Secretary General's report in what I will call plain English or the short version. How 193 countries come to consensus on issues, ending with agreed conclusions, or so we hope. <clears throat> and what Sir Optimist International's submitted written statement means. Since you can still register to attend until March 26, we will look at the registration process, but also explain how to navigate the virtual platforms yes. and events to make the most out of your experience. There are opportunities to be interactive with other delegates, and it's a perfect opportunity to increase your understanding of issues important to women and girls through events and official meetings hosted by the UN, by member states, and by NGO CSW New York. <laughs> CSW and NGO CSW are the two events held simultaneously every year with different registration systems, different rules, different kinds of events. And we'll go into that difference later in the webinar, including how to register if you have not made it past that step, or if you change your mind and decide to attend after listening to the webinar today. Any documents referred to in the webinar are available on the SI website at seroptimistinternational.org and many will also be online in the booth you will hear about. So it's my pleasure to introduce our first presenter, Sir Optimist UN Rep, Jackie Shapiro. Jackie is a former chair of NGO CSW and has been around CSW and the UN collecting knowledge for a while now. Jackie, the floor is yours. Thank you, Sharon. And I, I can't not say something about the movie, that hopefully one of those women or one of those girls will be Secretary General of the United Nations sometime uh -huh. soon. Yeah. <laughs> Greetings to my optimist uh, friends everywhere. I apologize in advance to those of you who have been coming to CSW for years and know this information, but as Sharon said, this is in fact my 24th CSW. However, as a historian, I think it's important 
to briefly look back and outline the dynamic process of a CSW, which has yeah. brought us to this year, our first virtually held CSW. The concept of a distinct body dedicated to making recommendations to advance the status of women was germinated in the United Nations Charter, but it was not until June of 1946 that CSW became a functional committee under Ekenstock. Its first meeting in 1947 had 15 representatives. But of course, we have to remember that the United Nations only has 55 member states. Uh, Ekenstock is the Economic and Social Council. It is one of the six principal organs created by the UN Charter to carry out the mission and activities of the United Nations. ECOSOC is the workhorse of the UN system, mandated to serve as a forum for international economic, social, humanitarian, and environmental issues, as well as human rights, and to formulate policy recommendations addressed to the member states and the UN system in those areas of expertise. Consultative status for non-governmental organizations who have expertise that is of value to the UN and its deliberations is granted through ECONSOC. From its beginning of the CSW, had a close relationship with NGOs in consultative status who provided much valuable information on the unknown situation of women in their countries, as well as advocacy for advancing the status of women both in the UN and at home. From 1947 to 1962, CSW had an important role in raising global awareness of women's issues, in setting standards and in formulating international conventions to change discriminatory legislation worldwide. In the 1960s, CSW focused on collecting data on the specific economic, political, and legal, and legal situation of women in every country and analyzing this information as a basis for drafting human rights instruments to expand women's rights. It encouraged the UN system to increase its technical assistance specifically to women, reporting that women were disproportionately affected by poverty. 1972 was the 25th anniversary of CSW. Uh, a lot had happened, but a lot hadn't happened. Uh, CSW recommended that 1975 be declared the International Women's Year. And that same year, 1975, was the first international conference of women followed by the UN Decade of Women with the theme, Equality, Peace and Development. And after that, we know we have three more international conferences on women. What's important in this time is that CSW shifted from promoting women's issues as something separate to insisting that they were cross-country, cross-cutting issues essential to all development. Now we get to Beijing, the Fourth World Conference on Women in 1995, the culmination of this building process since 1946 in the UN to bring women's rights to the forefront. The platform for action remains the blueprint for actions needed to achieve gender equality and the empowerment of women and girls. Some important issues, older women, the digital divide, the role of women and girls, uh, women, uh, pardon me, the role of men and boys was, were not particularly highlighted, but uh, you know, they came into play uh, and have been discussed much more since. Along the way, as the critical needs and roles of women gained prominence, there were four UN entities 
devoted to specific areas of women's empowerment, and many of them overlap. So in 2011, these four groups were merged to into a more robust UN Women. UN Women is a secretariat for CSW preparing policy analysis and recommendations for the CSW to negotiate. The NGO CSW New York is a committee of Congo, an association of NGO organizations that since 1948 has promoted NGO committees as an expert resource for member states and has facilitated uh, NGO participation in UN meetings and world conferences. There are also NGO committees uh, on the status of women in Geneva and in Vienna. The one in New York organizes the events for CSW. In closing, it's a shame that we cannot all be together raising a cup of good cheer with our Sumeroptimist sisters from around the world. But remember, you are fortunate to be part of this tapestry of history that is advancing the status of women worldwide. Thanks. Thank you, Jackie. So now we know why we are here, but more importantly, we know why we should be here. Our next presenters are UN reps uh, Francis Zanadine and supported by Siren Fadler, who have been taking apart something called the Secretary General's Report to see what he has to say for CSW 65. Francis, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Francis Zainedin, SIUN rep in New York. Siren Fadler and I prepared this presentation, and I want to give her special credit for the photos that are shown. Um, as Jackie has already mentioned, the CSW receives reports from the Secretary General for deliberations on gender equality and women's rights at the global level. This year's report which is E slash CN six slash 2021 slash three reflects the theme, women's full and effective participation in decision-making in public life, as well as the elimination of violence for achieving gender equality and the empowerment of all women and girls. Next slide. Currently, Women serve as heads of government in only 21 countries. At the current rate, gender parity will not be achieved for another 130 years. <laughs> Women accounted for 45% of public administration workforce, but only 34% in decision-making positions. The highest share of women in decision-making positions is in Latin America and the Caribbean at 42%, while the lowest is in, surprise, surprise, the um. Arab states, 1%. Low representation of women in public sector decision-making leaves governments ill-equipped to respond to crisis situations, such as the COVID-19 pandemic, where women constitute 70% of the healthcare workers are on and are on the front lines. The report also shows that women's organizations have played an important role in many issues, human rights, gender-based violence, access to sexual and reproductive health and rights, education, workplace rights, financial inclusion, repeal of legislation and compliance with national laws and international agreements. So our role as Seroptimus is really very crucial in participating in all the changes that can be made. The report also recommended that male leaders should step up to promote gender equality and women's participation in public life. Mm -hmm. Now, the implication of this slide, while not mentioned in the report, is an example of what Norway has done. Siren 
has shared this with us and pointed out that the Norway Wealth Fund, the world's largest shareholder, requires the companies that it invests in to boost the number of women on their boards and to consider setting targets of fewer, if fewer than 30% of their directors are female. The Norway Wealth Fund believes that diversity is good for the boards of companies because it brings better perspectives for decision-making. They use a set of international principles and standards from the United Nations. As an investor, the Norway Wealth Fund sets its own priorities for investment in companies. So here is an example of the private sector um, uh, pushing for gender equality. So in the report, while there's an analysis and um, findings uh, of the research, there is a whole section at the end with conclusions and recommendations. The Secretary General's report provides uh, conclusions and recommendations for the commission to take action. There is a list of actions for governments and a call to the UN system to support member states in implementing those recommendations. Findings from this and other reports submitted this to the CSW are also used by member states to prepare the agreed conclusions, which Betty will address in a bit. <coughs> Excuse me. So what are some of the implications for the work of Seroptimus from a global to local perspective? Training girls to be leaders, providing education, supporting those who suffer from violence and abuse, collecting data to support the need to change legislation and policy, increasing awareness of gender inequalities, sensitizing local communities to the need to fight all forms of discrimination. In addition to our good works that we do, we should find ways to hold governments accountable. We should not only do good work to improve the lives of women and girls, we should also make sure that there are legislation and policies in place to eliminate all forms of discrimination against women and girls. And we should share areas of successes as well as persistent problems. What are some of the lessons learned? What are some of the solutions? Is there an opportunity to contact UN officers at the national level to seek as well as to support, to show support for implementation of the report's recommendations? Last but not least, I shall end with Siren's photo of this piece of street art, which has been newly installed in Manhattan. It is a painting of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who said, women belong in all places where decisions are being made. It should not be that women are the exception. So let's do all we can to improve the lives of women and girls on our journey to equality. Thank you. Thank you, Francis, and thank you, Siren. That's great. Um, a filtered rendition of what the Secretary General has to say is very helpful. Our next presenter is our main New York UN rep, Betty Levy, who has been following the negotiations. And while they are in English, it is not the English that we all speak, it is UN speak. You'll see what I mean. Betty, the floor is yours. Thank you, Sharon, and greetings to everyone. So while there are many, many distractions when you come to New York for CSW, like networking, attending side events, parallel events, in reality, the main purpose for CSW, which I must reiterate, is an intergovernmental body 
It is not a civil society meeting. So the main purpose is to develop a roadmap for achieving gender equality, resulting in agreed conclusions. So how does it all work? So the process starts with the Secretary General's report that um, Francis just described to you. And the next step is that UN Women, along with the five members of the CSW Bureau, create a zero draft. They do that by synthesizing what the Secretary General has put out in the report and any consultations that they've had uh, in the five regions of the UN with civil society. That is an open report. It gets posted on UN Women, uh, open draft. It gets posted on UN Women's website. Uh, but there is no direct way for civil society to ever give input into what's going on in this. So we have to rely on friendly member states and we really count on our civil society partners who are on official delegations to share information in live time so that we as civil society, we as SI can have input. So I'm going to ask you now that if any of you have or on currently on your official government delegation and you have been given access there's only two people being allowed into the negotiations at a time but if you've been given that access or you're on the delegation and getting daily feedbacks please put your name and your country in the chat box now that's the only way SI is going to be able to have any direct input the next step that happens after the zero draft is that the member states get together um, with, in their own country delegation and with their capital, and they insert lots and lots of descriptions and words or changes, controversial, whatever. And that's called a compilation deck. As you can see, it gets quite big, 224 pages this year from what started out six. From that compilation text, the facilitator this year, it's the Republic of Korea. It's their first time doing it. They are charged with paring that document down, that 224 pages down, reducing all the duplicate of, you know, each state may have put in the word all, so they leave it there once. That's called a working text. When the working text comes out, from this point on, this is totally closed off to civil society. We don't see this, again, unless a member state has shared it with us. The we have then what is called readings. Readings are when the member states get together, they discuss language, they discuss their, what's a red line for them, what new language they wanna put on. And again, the facilitator has to go back, Nan Suk in this case, he has to go back with his team and try to put together a document which comes out as revision one, rev one. And in that he's tried to reduce all the duplications, but he does not change language from other countries or from, you know, from the different countries. He just takes out duplications and reduces that text to a more manageable from 224 pages to something the governments can really work on. At that point, we will have multiple readings and multiple revisions. The second reading just finished last night. We are expecting um, the facilitator to get out hit Rev 2 by Sunday night or early Monday morning. Governments will then have the chance to consult with their country capitals and with within groups, like within the Africa group or the Santiago group or the mountains group, to come up with language that they as a group 
can live with. And this goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until either time runs out or the chair's patience runs out, the chair of the bureau. And what we get, if we don't have a document by consensus, we get what is called a chair's text. And there's no more discussion once it gets to chair's text. It just comes out. And then there is a, it's not a vote. CSW does not vote on it. it like some resolutions, there are votes, but the agreed conclusion does ne never has a vote. It is agreed upon by consensus. So that's um, where we go there. Um, next slide, Sue. I wanted to just also say that they have also come up this year already. They have said that if it is not a consensus document, there is going to be no document. There's going to be no compromises this year. It's consensus or nothing. So a red line has already been drawn in the sand. Uh, so this is really important. I Putting up on the screen, this is the first power in the zero text. There's nothing controversial here. There should not be anything controversial here. This was based on past agreed conclusions. This is how we're putting forward how you could go. You'll see there are no um, you know, brackets, nothing in bold other than the, CS, the CSW thing. Once we get past, next slide, please. So this now, I'm, I know it's hard for you to read and I don't expect you to read this. This is the compilation text. This is that same power on your left. That's that same power, not changed at all. And then this is the additions that all these different countries or groups want to add to that one paragraph. And you'll see there are, uh, you can see, you know, slightly like this word General Assembly comes up and up and up and up. So some, that's what I meant by duplications that they're going to take out. Um, the, at, from this point on, no new language comes in. It's very, very rare that you can get a new language. At this point, they are just looking how they can bring this back down to a document that, as I mentioned, can get consensus, but is also usually between six and eight pages. So they're, going, they're trying to clean out the document from this point. Next page. All right, so this was, you saw that one para with all those comments. This is now what the facilitator has done, how he has put this together so that we can now, not we, the member states, I'm sorry, I gotta be very clear about that. The member states can negotiate about those things that are in bold or in brackets or, in, or that are in parentheses. So you see already the changing from that first document with no markings on it, to the second, to the third, how this process works. Next slide. Okay, this is the, the this was Rev One. This was again, this was after the member states met and talked about it. And then the facilitator went back and he came again, cleaned it up more, and he came up with this version. This is what they just finished talking about. Again, I'm showing you a very non-controversial paragraph, you know, to just to show you. But I do want to point out one thing that's in here that for civil society is very troubling and is, is controversial for us. And that is the bracket that says, as adopted by the General Assembly. And the reason why that is really significant, it means that when in other parts of the UN, maybe it's WHO, maybe it's at a regional meeting like the Santiago report or an FCCC report, they're saying 
those are not acceptable language because it was not passed by the General Assembly. That limits where a lot of women's rights and a lot of focus has been put on for women. So I, I just wanted to give you an example because you're going to hear this language thrown around, you know, like we're going to be having Rev 2 this week. The uh, member states, as I mentioned, will be in consultation among themselves uh, Monday within their own governments and their own groups, uh, Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday will be the third reading. And then they will just keep going, you know, from there. And again, um, if you have questions, please put them in the chat. I'm happy to answer them. But th this is the meat and potatoes. This is the whole reason why we have a CSW, to get this outcome, to get this agreed conclusion. It's not the side events. It's not the networking. This is why governments are there working together on this. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. Thank you for translating the current draft document for us. And let's hope for a good outcome this year. That's the prize we all work towards. Our next presenter is the New York Center Contact uh, UN Rep, Vanessa Triers, who is coming to us today from Colombia, where she is visiting family. Vanessa will brief us on what Seroptimist International is saying at CSW 65 with our written statement. Vanessa, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Sharon. Um, greetings, everyone. So the SI statement for the Commission Status of Women this year, CSW 65. So a few months before CSW, about four, six months before, NGOs in consultative status with the UN, Economic and Social Council, ECOSOC, might submit a written statement to the Secretary General on the thematic issues considered by CSW. Soroptimist International submitted a statement that can be found at the Soroptimist website and additionally at the UN's women's website, as all submitted statements are circulated by UN women and posted in their website. So I'm posting in this chat um, the link to the Soroptimist um, CSW statement. Why it is important to know about this document and its content? Well, um, this is a channel for us to bring the voice of women and our concerns to the global arena and international frameworks. The more organizations are able to identify and voice women's issues, there could be a chance that we, we are heard. These statements, once submitted, they are available for the Secretary General, for country members of states and delegates, and any other organization. On the, on the other hand, it is important for us as SI delegates and members to know its content, to advocate for these issues more effectively. When SI advocates uh, have a meeting with the country officials or member states, or in fact, any other organization, then we could handle this document and use it as a tool for speaking about the current issues impacting women. The main points in the document, in my opinion, through um, though you guys, when you read it, you might identify others. Um, one of them is girls' education. There are many reasons we advocate for girls' education, such as it's an investment in the economic growth of a country. It prevents early child marriage and unplanned pregnancies. Children whose mothers went to college have more chance to go to college, etc. Another issue we highlighted in the SI statement is women's full and effective participation. As the statement put it, women and girls of all ages serve a seat at the table in public life, leadership, leadership and decision making. So it is just um, right to do so. Additionally, society's exclusion of women from leadership positions in public life keeps them from benefiting from the special contribution that we women bring to decision making 
Uh, women show a tendency to have a different leadership styles than men. For example, the ability to relate to people affect, affected by their decisions, which is which are most needed. Social norms and stereotypes is another uh, point in our statement. Uh, gender norms can change as a result uh, of broad drivers of change, such as uh, economic development or the spread of communications technology, deliberate efforts to encourage change, such as uh, new laws, policies and programs, or social and political activism. Exposure to new ideas and practices that get discussed through formal and informal channels, like conversations, role modeling. So the media, we can see here, the media has a very important role here. Um, if you are interested in all your work in this area, um, there, there is a um, document that I could post after my intervention. Other important issues that we might find in the document um, is violence against all women and girls, harmful traditions such as, uh, such as early marriage and the implications for women and girls due to COVID-19. We all, we, we, um, you could find these um, issues um, stated on, on, on our state. Now, the another important part of this document is to provide recommendations. So um, we have states uh, some recommendations, and as you can see on the document, such as um, all states should ratify the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, CEDA, called CEDA. Um, and right now we have something like 180 or 90 countries that have ratified it. Um, have social justice programs that respond to women and girls, promote education programs to improve social attitudes, ensure women and girls' participation in public life, and implement programs working with men and boys to prevent gender-based violence. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vanessa, and uh, all the best and safe travels. Thank you. Uh, the next presentation is from our New York rep, uh, Maria Fernella, who has just finished co-chairing the Commission on Social Development, or CSOC-D as we know it, that closed a few weeks ago. And she's probably been sleeping ever since. It was quite a grueling uh, exercise for her. She did an outstanding job and learned all about this virtual platform stuff and will let us know how this varies from being there in person. Oh. Hey. So, optimists, welcome. My name is Maria Fornella Oninger, and I'm a so optimist, of course, UN representative in New York headquarters, and I'm uh, also uh, co chair of the Committee on Social D Development. So, I'm here to tell you we just finished our session of the Commission on Social Development. Uh, which ran uh, parallel to our civil society forum. And uh, of course, it was the first virtual commission that we attended. So I was asked to give you a few tips. I hope they're helpful. Well, uh, the virtual format has some advantages. For example, that you can access it um, from anywhere in the world. I heard today that 50% um, of the people that signed up to watch the Commission on Social Development had never um, attended it before. So that's pretty impressive. Um, virtual is good in that sense. There's some flexibility. Now, to watch web TV and to watch the Commission hour after hour, sitting by yourself in your living room or, or your office, it's very boring. So. I, my advice is to try to stay engaged through the Soroptimist Lab, which I think is a great tool, or through WhatsApp um, chats, chats that you can set up and, uh, and try to, you know, and also try to get as many side events and uh, parallel events as possible, because those are usually more entertaining 
and more interactive and there's a chat box. Now web TV is just watching TV. Anyway, there were many parts of the commission that were interesting and one is opening because you have to take a measure of the ambience and and I know that that's in person at the UN so that's that's nice it has some panache it has some interest and and of course the um, the general discussion for a while and the interactive dialogues especially the part that civil society is participating it's already done I think it's going to be through videos or well, there, there are several ways that it can be done, but um, at least um, that's the interactive dialogues is what I recommend the most, as well as opening. And then just choose, you know, the day that you want to watch, try to do other things, try to stay engaged through Soroptimist. I think we have an amazing team and amazing preparations this year. So um, those are my recommendations. Those are my two cents. And I hope this is helpful in some way. Have a great CSW and um, we'll connect sometime. Thank you, Maria. And when our UN reps are well placed within the NGO structure, SI has increased opportunities to engage and have influence. They all our UN reps serve on committees and follow specific areas of work. SI has general consultative status under the Economic and Social Council, or ECOSOC, in the world of acronyms. This gives us the opportunity to make written statements that Vanessa explained, but also other opportunities like delegate status during events, interventions, and oral statements being just a few. For CSOC D, we did a live intervention for the Kyoto Crime Congress next week, hosted by UN Vienna, we recorded a statement, and this year, SI has been invited to give an oral statement for CSW, and it will be pre-recorded. It takes some careful planning to choose just the right words to deliver a message to the member states in under three minutes. I sometimes feel like a little Zoom broadcast studio, but we never pass up the opportunity to address UN meetings. So who can attend CSW? How do you attend CSW and what comes next? I'm gonna separate the two events I referred to earlier. First, I will talk about the event organized by UN Women and the UN called CSW 65. This is the first time they have opened registration to anyone who wants to register and is part of an ECOSOC accredited organization such as Seroptimist International. Registration for this event is now closed, but no worries, since most of the important meetings are available on UN Web TV. Yes, the UN has a television platform. Just Google UN Web TV or go to the actual website on the screen and you can watch the important meetings live or at your leisure on demand anytime. There's a search function that sorts the options by day and time. On demand, when in the site, go to meetings and events and look for economic and social council and a selection will come up. Translation is provided in many languages. You may even hear our oral statement if you are patient and wait for hours and hours since we never know when we will be called. There's also side events hosted by member states and a complete schedule is already posted online. Go to the unwomen.org commission on the status of women and side events. Find the listing of virtual events. Some will be recorded on UN web TV, but most are not. Plan to register in advance for specific side events as they do fill up. There is a registration required for side events, just like getting a link for a call like this. Scan the schedule and use the RSVP link for each event for any that you want to attend. The other event is the NGO CSW Forum and registration is still open and will be until March 26th. Go to NGO CSW website and register as a guest or an advocate and create a profile. 
There should not be a charge, and if there is, you are in the wrong place on their site. You should get an immediate response, and then you're almost ready. Just complete your profile and start planning your calendar. The first items on the calendar are some pre recorded tutorials to help you navigate. Some events will already be full, but you will find many, many interesting events to fill your time at CSW. I recommend March 14th, the day before it begins, is consultation day. And that is an overview of all of the NGO CSW. There are over 700 parallel events to choose from. And when I said two events happen simultaneously, well, NGO CSW runs in parallel to CSW, thus the name of their workshops being parallel events. You will also find morning briefings. This is where representatives drop in to report on how the negotiations are going and other interesting presentations. We frequently start our day at CSW when we're live with the morning briefing to see where negotiations are, how long the delegation stayed up the night before, whether it was four in the morning or five in the morning. This year, parallel events are going around the clock on the platform. So if you can't sleep, just pull your laptop into your bed and tune into an event and enjoy your learning experience. Our next presenter is the person who doesn't sleep because there are so many events taking place at the moment. Bev Bucher is our International Director of Advocacy. Bev and Ula Madsen, the Assistant Director of Advocacy, work closely with our UN reps. Bev, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Sharon. Today I'll talk a little bit about the advocacy resources we have for uh, CSW 65, as well as some of the parallel events that Seroptimus International, um, some of the federations and individual Seroptimists are participating in. Next slide. Um, Seroptimus International has many resources to help you in preparing for CSW. Every year, we prepare an advocacy resource kit to help members understand the Seroptimus International position on the um, areas that are being covered in CSW. Um, this year, we've not prepared um, a separate resource for CSW 65 because the uh, CSW 64 Advocacy Packers Beijing plus 25 Review. So this will have in it all the information that you need regarding our positions on all of the issues regarding the Beijing Platform for Action. This is a, a really good um, resource so that you can see how Seroptimus advocates on each of those issues. Um, you can find this resource pack on the international website in the resource area, but you can also find it in our exhibit booth where um, I've placed it. So uh, those are the two places where you can find that resource. We also have a number of additional resources on the Seroptimus International website. If you have not visited the website, I encourage all of you to go and see what we have available. We have a number of position papers on many topics, but some of those that are particularly pertinent to this year's CSW are the access to lifelong education and training, economic empowerment of women and girls, leadership, gender-based violence, and I encourage you to look at the COVID-9 and gender equality position paper because this covers all the areas that Seroptimus works in. In addition, you can find blogs and various information on that Seroptimus website. It, the information is, is translatable. On the left side of the website, there is a button so you can translate into various languages. Some of the events that we have, the parallel events, um, the first one, every year we have a signature event that is designed to showcase Seroptimus projects 
throughout the world. And all of the federations, the five federations will be participating and highlighting one of their projects that aligns to the theme of the road to equality, preparing women and girls to lead. Um, so this parallel event is scheduled for March 18. And I really encourage all of you to go into the platform and create your profile and uh, sign up for this event if you want to participate because um, there is a capacity of 300. And remember that we have thousands of women participating from all parts of the world. It's not only for Seroptimus. Another event I'd like to highlight, uh, we are co-sponsoring an event with um, on female genital mutilation. And that event is with the um, North American and European Caucus. And you'll see on the, um, the other sheet that has all of the events listed that we are also participating with Women for Water Partnership on a leadership event called Fix the System and Get Her Elected with Women for Water Partnership and BPW Brazil. You can also see that Seroptimus International of Great Britain and Ireland has an event scheduled on, on trafficking and, human, and slavery. So um, do check that out. Parallel events, you don't have to be ECOSOC accredited to arrange a parallel event. We will be placing all of the events uh, and information regarding the SI scheduled events and other events that we learn about. We'll be posting information about that in the Seroptimus Lab and also uh, in our exhibit booth. We have just learned that um, Seroptimus International of San Francisco has an event scheduled. And that event is called Across the Ages, Intergenerational Intercultural Perspectives. And I've just lost my page. But anyway, so we're finding out more about these events every every day. And if you are Seroptimus that are participating in any event, you have a speaking part for um, a parallel event and we don't know about it, please let us know and then we will do our best to publicize your event as well. Um, how can you connect with Seroptimus? Well, one way you can connect with Seroptimus and other organizations is by visiting the exhibit booths. Seroptimus has an exhibit booth that we'll take a walk through in just a minute, but you can see and find information regarding our events. Uh, as we learn about them, announcements, you can ask questions, you can talk to Seroptimus leaders and more. We're still finding and discussing ways that we can use this exhibit booth to connect with Seroptimus and others during CSW. I also invite you to sign up for the Seroptimus Lab, which is a private discussion platform. Um, you don't have to worry about writing this down if you have not received an invite from your federation. Uh, there will be on Monday a document on the Seroptimus International website where all of the links from this presentation will be listed. So um, you will get to join that platform. It's a place where you can connect with Seroptimus on a variety of topics and issues that we will um, We'll walk through that as well in just a few minutes. The final call for me is a call for all writers. I'm looking for writers so that we can um, have a team to cover the important events at CSW, the official meetings and the parallel events that we're involved in. So if you are interested in being a writer, you can contact me at the IDA at seroptimusinternational.org, or you can also contact uh, me through the exhibit booth or the Seroptimus Lab. Next slide. Okay, we'll walk a little bit through. Uh, Sharon sh discussed part of the NGO CSW virtual forum. I'm going to show you how, what's in the exhibit booth. So once you log into the room, 
the booth, you can see on top a link and you'll press on next. Next slide. And here is the exhibit hall. You see that there are a number of organizations. Some of them have events in their booth. You can connect with them and you can see what uh, is happening in each of those booths. But to join, uh, to look at our Seroptimus booth, you're just going to click on our logo. Next slide. Okay, and here you see the inside of the exhibit booth. We will be posting more and more information as we get it inside the exhibit booth, but you see we have information about our events. We have information about Seroptimist. Um, we have a discussion platform. So um, this is not only for Seroptimists, it's for non-Seroptimists as well. We have our events listed and then we have the files. So if you want to see our advocacy resource or our statement, you can find them right here in the booth. And everything you need um, to know about all of our events and everything we're doing. The Seroptimus Lab. Okay, behind the black box, there we go. There is a, um, the link to join the lab. Um, as I said, you should have gotten a, an invitation, but you'll have this uh, on the, um, the information flyer on Monday. If you have not, you click that to join. And once you get into the lab, you can see that is the, the homepage in the lab. Uh, so the Seroptimus Lab is a mighty network platform. The homepage, um, this shows you what you will see when you enter the lab. And there you'll see that there's a poll from our ho host, Marlene. Um, the answers to the poll are very interesting because everyone in, in the lab is very interested to learn about optimists and advocacy and how they can participate. Next. The next tab, you will see topics. And there are four topics that you can join. Uh, Seroptimus International Advocacy. Um, we don't, we haven't started on a lot of these, but if you want to learn about what's happening in advocacy and perhaps learn what the UN reps are doing, this is one place where you can find information. The Road to Equality covers the topics of the President's Appeal. Um, the 100th anniversary in that topic Seroptimus members were asked to share information about historical um, events that happened within their club and then communications and impact. Um, next one. Okay, the, the, next, uh, it, the next part of the lab are the events. So again, if you want to know what are the events for CSW that Seroptimus is par participating in, you can click on these links and there is a registration link for each of the events as well. Um, also, when CSW is over, you will find information regarding to UN, re uh, rather uh, UN meetings throughout the world and um, special events, and you can join right through the link that's posted by our host. Next, interest. If you have specific interest that you would like to talk about, discussions will happen in these areas. So all you need to do is join, and then there will be discussions with other Seroptimus members, UN reps, and your advocacy team. And then finally, this is this shows the last one is teams. And the team that you are interested in for CSW is Seroptimist Online in Action at CSW. Once you have your account created, you will have to click on this link and ask to join the team. You will be, um, you will be approved and then you can join that team. And this is where all the discussions will happen regarding CSW. I, I do also want to say that, again, the lab is for Seroptimus only. So if you are joining for, 
for the first time, you will be asked if you are a Seroptimist and there'll be some questions that our host Marlene will ask you before you're given access. So that's a little overview of what's happening in the Seroptimist lab. And it is a wonderful platform for Seroptimists to get to know each other and to talk about issues that we advocate for at the UN. If there's anything you need, please feel free to contact me and I will do my best to answer your questions and help you. Thank you. Thanks, Bev. Are we doing a live demo, Sue, or no, we're going on to this. Okay, so before we move to questions, I want to take this opportunity, and I would love to sing it, but you know the song, There's Going to Be a Party? Um, if I sang it, you might all disappear off the webinar, so, but you are all invited. The registration for our 100th birthday celebration event is expected to open in the next few weeks. We will get the message out through active seroptimists like yourself. Federation websites, social media, and the SI website. I'm asking for your support in making this a success. Mark October 2 and 3 on your calendars, and with two time zones and multiple languages, no one will be left behind. The more early bird registrations we have, the easier our planning will be. We also will have some unique sponsorship packages to offer. So all of you who were going to fly to San Francisco and spend loads of money can now purchase a fabulous meal, gosh, even hire a chef and purchase an excellent bottle of wine and be together as we celebrate 100 years. Come and share in our bright past and raise a glass to our brilliant future. One thing I am sure of is that I won't be in the group celebrating 200 years. So this is a one-time opportunity. Let's put this into our history book. I don't ask for much, but for this, I am asking you to be there with members from around the world. Thank you. And thanks to everyone. I hope you've learned something new today, and maybe we will find you in the Seroptimist exhibit hall or on the Seroptimist lab at CSW. We'll remain online to answer questions or see you at the next SI Voices webinar. I think it's been a great overview of CSW. I hope everybody has learned something. And if you weren't registered, maybe you will register. But this is one of the main things that Seroptimist International does is influence global policy. And this is one of the key ways we do it. So thank you very much. I hope that uh, your chat questions have been answered and um, we'll uh, leave the line open, but we'll finish our recording.